even that though, then I start to say, well, I can't do that either. How do we do that? So I realized that we need a doctor to heal us and to make us whole. And I bet you all know who that doctor is. That doctor, of course, is God, is Jesus. He's the one through his grace, his free gift given to us without no matter what we deserve. Um, it is a gift given. To, and by that gift of grace, we receive God's life and his love within us. And that changes us and transforms us. So if you want to just think a minute, we'll let you share later, but just think a minute about a relationship that you've had where you just felt loved. Like think about maybe a parent or a child or a spouse or a grandparent who loved you at a time when maybe you were afraid or scared, alone, or um, just, just having a bad day. And think about how being loved made a difference in your life. So just for a second, take just a, a moment to think of that. And then we'll, we'll let you share that at the end. Um, but you can tell by those examples that knowing that you're loved, having that love fill you, heals you and makes you whole. It changes you. So sin is a brokenness in our lives. That you see a puzzle? When we become the piece that breaks away, it changes the puzzle and it changes the piece. Neither one is made whole. They're both harmed. So when we are not in relationship, when we are not connected to others, we are in need of healing. Um, we recognize that healing, when it's a physical illness, right? We know when we need to go to a doctor, we hurt, we're just not ourselves. But how do we recognize that healing that we need? How do we recognize the sin when it's a spiritual um, illness? How do we know when things aren't right? Now, parents, I bet you can tell when you sit down at the dinner table or get in the car and the kids have not been getting along and they've been fighting, even if they don't tell you about it, right? You recognize that something's not right in this relationship, that there's not a joy, that there's an anxiety, that there's a brokenness in the relationship. And kids, you can tell it too, if your parents have been at odds with each other or with somebody else, they're just not themselves. So we do recognize this need for spiritual healing. Um, when we look at our relationships and we look at the joy, when we fail to see joy and find joy in God or in each other, when we fail to communicate well, those are all signs that we need healing and to be brought back into the community. So um, it takes a moment of silence every day or nearly every day, maybe every week to just spend a little time to reflect on that and think about it. Um, when, you know, how are your relationships going? How is your joy? How is, how is your anxiety inside of you? And if you rec start to recognize those things, those are signs that you need to look a little deeper to see what's causing that and what's causing the need for healing. So maybe to think about too tonight, um, and you can talk about it as a family, maybe you can do it as a family or individually, what could become like a catalyst for um, thinking about what, where you need healing in your life? Because it does take a few minutes of your time and we are all pretty busy and we all find it hard to find time, but maybe your catalyst could be um, something taped on your mirror. So when you're brushing your teeth, you remember, okay, let's stop and think about how are my relationships today? How have they been? How's my joy? How's my anxiety? How are things going? Or maybe you put like a rock on your pillow. And so you can't lay down on your pillow and get comfy until you think about your, sin, your sins and your anxiety and your need for healing until you move that rock. Or maybe you put something in your car. We all spend lots of time in the car. Maybe you put something, maybe a holy picture or a crucifix to just remind you to stop for a little bit and think about those things. So again, think about that. We're going to put that question or that thought in the chat later on for you to talk about. Um, but just consider the times that you need to recognize 
that brokenness in your life. Because then when you start to recognize your brokenness, then you can start to turn back to God. You can start to be that puzzle piece that even though it's hard to say, I'm sorry, you can start to come back and be made whole again. Because that wholeness not only helps you as an individual, but it helps the whole puzzle, right? It helps the whole community, the whole body of Christ. It helps God when we return to him. So all these sacraments that give us healing are not just sacraments for our own self and our own healing, but they really heal the body of Christ. Um, I have this imagination, don't take this as it's in the catechism, but it's my own thought or imagination that if it was somehow possible that every single one of us, every person in the whole world could receive the sacrament of reconciliation at exactly the same moment, that all the sin would be gone, we'd all be healed, there'd be no brokenness, and it'd be a perfect world, and we'd be like in heaven. Um, not sure if that's true, but it, it's an image for me that shows me and helps me realize that when I'm broken, so is Jesse. Like my brokenness affects her. She may not realize it directly, but it's there. Um, and when there's somebody I don't even know across the world who's broken, it can affect me. But by going and receiving healing in the sacraments, it heals everyone. It heals the world. Maybe not perfectly, maybe little by little and step by step, but that those sacraments bring healing to everybody in the world. Um, like that puzzle. So um, we have three sacraments that offer us healing in our world. Um, the first one that we think of with physical healing generally is the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. In that sacrament, we generally think of receiving physical healing, although I also think that it helps with spiritual healing. Um, when you're sick, you may not, and you receive that sacrament, you may not exactly get cured, but there's a peace that settles in, in a knowing that this illness is not caused by um, something I did or some sin. It, it, you know, all those things can go through your mind when you're dealing with physical illness, but the sacraments bring that peace of knowing God is caring for you and he's loving you. Um, I always think of the sacrament, you know, when they anoint you for the sacrament of anointing of the sick, they place oil on the palm of your hand. So I always think of like, we all are familiar with hand lotion and putting it on our hands and just, it heals our hands, but it also protects them and it cares for them and it strengthens them for the work that we're about to do with them. And so the sacrament of anointing of the sick is similar to that in that it heals us, but it also strengthens us for whatever's ahead and it protects us from that which can harm us. So sacrament of anointing of a sick is the one, but the second, and then the second sacrament that we can think of with healing is the sacrament of Eucharist. Um, Eucharist actually has an, a healing effect. Um, there was, was it this group or was it, it might've been the second grade group that, that picked the rite of reconciliation on this past Sunday and, and chose that as the, the one that they wanted to hear on Sunday. And you know, it's beautiful that our, our, our mass offers us everything, including the healing from our sins, our venial sins, and just that healing. Think about it. When we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we are made whole with him. We are made one with him, and not only with him, but with each other in the body of Christ. And so there's a healing that happens through just the sacrament of Eucharist. And then the third sacrament that gives us this grace, this gift of, of healing and wholeness and that destroys our brokenness is the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, it's the one that we least look forward to, probably, but perhaps most enjoy walking away from because it's it just it it has an effect on us that is hard to describe but it's just healing. It's being made whole. It's getting rid of that brokenness in our lives. And so I want to walk you through a little bit through the, um, the steps in that, in that sacrament of reconciliation. So I'm going to share my screen here.